Hi folks, first part on the Haas UMC 750. I am super excited. Let's make this lathe tool post for Theo from TA Crafted. If you haven't seen the video of his shop tour in Southern Germany, absolutely amazing. He has this modification inspired by Robin Renzetti for his Weiler manual lathe. I think it's a very cool modification and I'm honored to be able to help make this part for him. And what an awesome way to dive into our five axis workflows in Fusion 360, pushing those tool paths through the Camplete True Path, learning how to run the right tooling, the positional work, as well as some simultaneous five axis. We've got a chunk of 4140 in our vise. We're gonna tackle this project in three setups, but I don't, I'm not really thinking of it like three setups. Here's why. The first setup is actually upside down. All we're doing on this setup is establishing this plane. Theo wants this to be very smooth and very flat. He says he'll probably scrape it. I wanna give it our best shot at giving him the perfect surface as is. So we're going to use a smaller diameter tool that's gonna to minimize any potential tram or nod error versus say using a two or three inch diameter face mill and keep things simple as we're getting started here on the machine. We'll also machine this relief shoulder and the holes that'll be for holding gasket material. And this center pocket, which has a fairly tight tolerance of plus 0.021 millimeters minus zero. That's plus eight tenths of an inch minus zero. To check that tolerance, we've got an incise set of inside bore mics. Luckily, we have a 25 millimeter calibration ring, so that really helps confirm that we can check the tolerance with a gauge that's quite close. Again, the upper range of that tolerance was 21 thou. We ended up coming a little closer than I would have liked. With sock to leave, we were just under. We did our final skim passes and brought it out to 0 0.018 millimeters with a tolerance range of 0 0.021. So we're definitely inside, good to go. Setting up a helical half inch end mill for steel. We've got it in a milling chuck, which is a really rigid way to hold things. It should be real low run out. Checking that run out on the Speroni. The green bars are actually not to scale, which is a little deceiving because the run out here was one ten thousandth of an inch. That is awesome. So this is how I finished up one. What I wanted to do was give myself a datum surface. And so by machining this left edge and this back edge, we've created this machined geometry. Awesome service finish, We're really happy. The first time we cut any part, let alone a steel part on the UMC. Very happy with how it's, it's handling the material, the tooling and the surface finishes. We're now going to flip our part over to go between op one to op two, locating our new coordinate system off of the sketch that I used to, to drive that last cleanup toolpath in op one. I've got to probe in these two surfaces. Unfortunately, the ball diameter on the Renishaw probe tip I have in the machine right now is too small. The shank would hit my raw material. So I super glued a couple of gauge blocks onto that machine surface that extends out the diameter, probe in our part, and just make sure to be very conscious and double check yourself when you're subtracting out or adjusting those coordinate system values to compensate for the gauge block. On to op two. The sole goal of this operation is to expose these four counterbores that are gonna let us do all of the critical tolerances, all of that final work in the third setup. So to expose those holes and make use of them for the cap screws, we've gotta do an adaptive to rough out the majority of the material, as well as some finishing contours and bores to clean up the inside of those features so that those counterbores are done. Stick around for the end of this video as well. We'll talk about some of the lessons that we learned and the one mistake that we made on this project. Now we can pull the part out of the vise, throw in a aluminum riser that's got the rock lock studs in it. And this is what I really like. If you click here for the card to our video on our five axis setups, where we've got these setups pre-established. And so we can pop these in all of our datums are currently set. We've got a joint origin to throw our material in there. Our jaws are slid around. We've got the right coordinate system to push this automatically into the complete true path for verification and simulation. Really makes for a nice workflow to program parts and have a really high sense of confidence and process reliability. 
Sorry, I misspoke earlier. It's really operation 2B instead of operation 3. But what's nice is we established the coordinate system from when we machined the fixture itself. That coordinate system remains in place. So we have machined that geometry, we have made it. That gives me a really high sense of confidence that it's going to be accurate. And we allow that to flow through the remaining operations as we're tweaking this part. The thing I like about this fixturing is it's the way this tool post is going to be used. It's going to be bolted down through these four holes. It also lifts the part up a bit off of our rock lock base, which is important for getting to it with the right tooling and the gauge lengths. And I held it over just a hair on the back side, which will let us do some cleanup work on this back face here without gouging much at all into our aluminum fixture. When we mount it onto the fixture, it will pivot or swivel on this center post. And there is ever so slight amount of slop between the four screws. So grab an indicator, we bumped it in and got it dead nuts as we went across it. Starting off by cleaning up this surface here. Again, this is a very critical face because this is where the quick change tool post itself mounts to. I started with an adaptive with five thou axial stock to leave and then we came back with a parallel operation to really clean up that face with minimal amount of tool pressure and in that parallel we're using avoid touch surfaces to stay five thousandths of an inch off of these vertical walls because we'll come back and clean those up with a 2d contour Another relatively tight tolerance to hold on that surface right here, plus zero millimeters minus 0 0.033, about 1.3 thousandths of an inch, no problem at all holding that. Tapping that hole with an M12 by 1.75, so a relatively large diameter tap. I've got a fair amount of time into this workpiece. Last thing I wanna do is break a tap, so we're going conservative. We're using the tapping with chip breaking, AKA PEC tapping on the Haas control. Make sure you have setting 133 enabled. This ensures the spindle is oriented correctly as you PEC tap, but no problem at all. First hole we've rigid tapped on the UMC, just amazing. It really is cool. And now we get to start the fun stuff, the positional five axis work. You could do this part on a three axis machine. There's some undercut areas on the sides as well as the back side. But the benefit of doing this on a five axis machine is the ability to use tool orientation to get better surface finishes by tipping the tool over. With a ball or bull nose end mill, you just don't have that same control because your tool is always going to be normal too, or you're going to be cutting with an area of the tool where you have very low surface footage, very low gullet for chip evacuation. So shout out to SS CAD CAM. He has certainly helped us understand how to use this star globe. What this is, is a simple sketch, always kind of reminded me of the Epcot building at Disney World, that allows you to quickly and efficiently pick the Z-axis orientation that you want that's going to be best for the operation at hand. So for example, as we're using this ball nose end mill to do a 3D contour on this face, we've picked a star globe that will orient our part such that the z-axis is pointed straight up and that tips the tool over as it comes into contact with the part and we're getting a better point of contact with that ball end mill as we move into the positional ie 3 plus 2 but also the simultaneous five axis stuff we're running these tool pass through the camplete true path software which gives me a hugely increased confidence that we've got the right tool pass, we've got the right gauge length tooling, we've got the right fixture heights, and we're basically not going to crash the machine. We'll do a full video on this later, but you can run the collision check mode, which runs behind the scenes, but you can also just scroll through the code or the graphics and you can look at a full-blown machine model. It shows you exactly what's going on. And TruePath does a lot of other things kind of behind the scenes in terms of taking over your linking moves. It actually started out, I believe, as software to handle posting code for one program from multiple different CAM softwares and kind of merging those tool paths all together. Uh, but we're using it mostly here for the simulation and the verification of avoiding collisions, both with the machine and the housing, but also gouging out your part or rubbing a tool holder nut into say your part or fixture, really, really cool stuff. And while most of this part was three plus two or positional tool pass, I had to do something as full simultaneous on our first project. And these four holes are actually really good candidates. We're using a Swarf 
toolpath from the multi-axis strategy. It's actually really easy to program once you get it down. I think that's one of the really cool things about Fusion is how easy they make this to work. But again, this is where the TruePath software really shines because we're coming in fairly close here and it shouldn't crash. I mean, it just shouldn't, but a lot more confidence in other things like for instance, the platter of our machine. So if we take a look at that toolpath in TruePath, what I really care about is making sure as it rotates up, we don't have something else crash like the sheet metal housing of the spindle into the platter or frame of the B axis. So sure enough here we can see as it rotates around, we've got plenty of clearance, not an issue whatsoever. As like so many things with CNC, it's uh, garbage in, garbage out. You've got to be much more conscious with five axis tool paths and using software like TruePath to model the correct stick out of your tool as well as the correct holder. We got lucky, we generally have used a lot of Mari tool holders and on your tool library within Fusion, if you edit a tool, under holder, select holder, the Mari tool holders, or at least most of them are already included. Finishing up with a couple of M5 tapped holes. Again, this is the kind of stuff where it would be a pain in the butt to set this up on a three axis machine. You could do it on a fourth axis as well, but five axis makes this so easy to do, which is really exciting. And then finally, engraving the logos. We had offered to put the TA Crafted logo on there, obviously, and Theo insisted that we also put our logo on there, which we're happy to do and, and appreciate that he offered that. And again, the nice thing with five axis when we're engraving is we don't have to keep the tool normal to or perpendicular to that face. We can tip it over just a hair to get better tool life, reduce the burrs, better surface footage, better chip evacuation, and it looks Great. So what's the one mistake that we made? We had a gouge on that earlier adaptive operation. And that gouge is our fault, and I didn't want that to be seen. So we dropped it down the height plane by about 20 thousandths of these main surfaces around the tool post, which shouldn't affect its functionality whatsoever. What that did, at least this is my hypothesis, is that when we dropped that down, that resulted in seeing all these horrible looking gouge marks where this vertical face meets the surface face of the tool post. I'm not happy with it, and I did think about redoing it from scratch, but what I'd rather do is have Theo get this one, take a look, make sure it works, because if we're gonna remake it for him, let's let him have the chance to offer any input or changes or tweaks. And it is just a cosmetic issue. I'm not happy about it. I'd like to fix it, and the offer stands to make him a second one, but I'm also pretty happy with how we got through making the first part on our five axis machine. Service finishes were great, tolerances were great, really a confidence booster. Last up is to box it up and ship it out. Again, really appreciate the chance to meet Theo. It was a impromptu Instagram message after we were touring the Hermla factory in Southern Germany and a really inspirational kid with a bright future ahead of him. Hope you folks learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you soon.